Hi, and welcome back to a Save for Parts Equipment Teardown and Review. This one is not a paid or sponsored review. No one is giving me free stuff to say anything about this device. Today we're tearing apart the 1400 watt Extreme Power US electric jackhammer or demolition hammer. Now I've been using these pretty frequently out at Sandland where we're digging a network of sandstone tunnels in the bedrock. And we've used these for a few years. I keep buying more of them. We finally started to have one that's getting a little old. It's actually starting to fail. So I think that's a good time to tear it apart, see what's in there, see what we think about it, and see if we can bring it back to life in any way. So I'm taking a break from digging to investigate a power failure I'm having with one of my chisels. Now, this is my very first chisel, the number one unit that I bought. And I bought this a couple years ago. It's been beat to death, basically. I've been using it almost every time I've been out there digging. I've dug through my own power cord by accident, I've smashed this, I've dropped this, I've probably overheated this, so it's really no wonder that it's starting to die. It does still work, it just isn't performing as well as it used to. It isn't putting out as much power. So I actually like these enough that I've bought a couple of them. I have some squirreled away here, I've got another one here. Um, I think I've showed these before. This is what a brand new one looks like. And these are the very weird name, Extreme Power US. If you look it up online, this is this is all one word, Extreme Power US. So uh, you can find them on Amazon or eBay. Um, the place I've actually found these the very cheapest is Home Depot. They're like $90 on Home Depot's website. And uh, yeah, they come with the drill, they come with some bits, gloves, uh, protection. Uh, they've got some uh, lubricant there, some extra brushes. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about these. Uh, they're cheap. They work fantastically well for how cheap they are. I mean, they literally work for mining through bedrock. So, um, yeah, these things are fantastic. Now, this is in no way a sponsored video. Extreme Power US does not pay me to say these are great. They don't send me any free ones. If they would send me a free one, hey, I wouldn't complain, but uh, I've bought all of these with my own money. I've paid 90 to $100 for each one. And I have a couple spares, although this is actually the first time in several years that I've actually had to take one out of rotation because it started to wear out. So let's open this guy up and see what makes it go. About the only downside I found of these is they use a very weird non-standard uh, chisel chuck. So um, this is what I believe is called a 17 millimeter hex. So it's not SDS. Um, it's not anything standard. It's apparently used by a couple other chisels, uh, something that Harbor Freight sells. You can get other blades than the ones that come with it. You just have to go on and, and search that 17 millimeter hex on uh, eBay or whatever. Let's go ahead and start taking this apart. Mm. These are very difficult bolts to get out. Uh, as I've said, I've used this for literally years now, mining through sandstone bedrock, so every inch of this is probably full of sand. I had put this 100 micron screen on the air intake so it can still get cooling air through without sucking sand into it, but there's a lot of other little crevices and holes and places for sand to get inside. Oh, boy, I cannot get this bolt out of here. I'm going to throw this in the vise and work on it. I'm going to try not to crack the housing on it too much here. Theoretically, I think if you take off this front unit, you can put different chucks on it. So you could probably put an SDS chuck or some other interface on here. It's a pretty simple device. Now I've got to take this level of bolts out, which are a different size because of course they are. All right, so this stuff doesn't actually look too terrible. It's a little filthy, but I could probably clean off and replace this grease. So I've got this interesting little uh, hammer, almost like a piston in here. So as the rotary motion of the drill uh, motor goes around, this little hammer just sits here and, and smashes into the hammer thing that's inside here. And then that smashes against our chisel and does the work for us. Give it some fresh uh, multi-purpose grease. Let's see what's going on under all this gunk. Now 
All right, so we've got it apart. And again, despite our 100 micron screen, there's quite a bit of dirt in here. There's quite a bit of kind of grungy fine sand dust that's gotten inside. And I'm sure that's worked its way into all the electrical stuff, into all the bits and pieces here. I'm going to continue cleaning out some of these gears as I come to them, re-greasing stuff and reassembling it. You might notice there's almost like a, a head gasket in here. So this is a gasketing system that's keeping this part here uh, separate from the top part. And when I took it apart, the gasket kind of came off in several pieces. So part of the gasket's here, part of it's here, it's missing over there. Um, so I really should be replacing that gasket. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find one exactly like that. If I have time, I might be able to make a new one. Or we might just smear grease all over it, put that screen back on, and call it a day. Alright, we've got the butt end of our motor. We've got our brushes, which they do uh, provide extra ones. And then uh, down in there is the armature. And that's what I've heard can fail on drills like this. And again, you can see this uh, very fine silica sandstone dust that has gotten in there. So that could possibly be in all the electrical bits in there. So I'm uh, not sure if that's causing an issue or not. So I can't actually get the armature out. Uh, I didn't really see a way from either end to get it out. I think what I am going to do is replace the brushes. I'm going to blast all of this out with compressed air. And I might just shoot some silicone spray in there just for fun. We'll see if that does anything. So one thing people have asked me about, and I've gone back and forth on this, um, is whether or not these have any shock absorption or hand protection from the vibration. There is this weird little rubber membrane, and there actually is a little bit of play here where this bolt goes through. So this bolt holds the handle on up here, and it has about that much freedom of play. So there is a tiny amount of shock absorption. It's not much, it's not great. I use anti-vibration gloves when I'm using these. I think that helps a little bit. So if you're going to be using one of these long term, uh, doing a lot of work with them, you should do some kind of vibration protection, wrist brace, anti-vibration gloves, and uh, I think that'll help in addition to the tiny amount of flex or shock absorption that's built in here. So we've got it all back together, we've got everything cleaned out, everything re-greased, and let's see if it actually still works. Yeah, it still runs, but we'll actually have to do some digging with it to see if that improved the performance at all. All right, we're back at Sandland. We've slapped the 100 micron dust filter back on our drill. Let's see if it's uh, benefited from that cleanup at all. All right, we definitely still have less power with this than we started and less power than a fresh one. So I think we've done some irreparable damage uh, to the motor here. And really, again, for $90, I don't know if it's worth trying to open this up again and replace the motor or we'll just replace the whole unit. We'll set this one aside. It's still useful for fine detail work. It's useful enough for stuff that doesn't need the full uh, 1400 watt power. It does still work. It's just gone down to maybe a thousand watts versus 14. So we're going to semi-retire this one and move to a fresh one. All right. So even though I couldn't bring that one back to life, would I still recommend the Extreme Power US 1400 watt demolition hammer? Yes, absolutely. These things are great. They literally last underground mining a tunnel out. And yes, they eventually die from sandstone ingestion, but so do the name brand drills. The owner of Sandland uses a very similar name brand drill, and those cost in the range of $600. And he honestly kills them about once a year. He has to send one out for repair, and it's about the same issue that motor or armature goes out. So these things fail in the same way as a name brand. They last, I don't know, possibly longer than a name brand, and they cost less than a sixth of the name brand cost. So I'm going to say, even if I keep killing these things, I'm going to keep on buying them. Once again, this is not a sponsored review, not a product placement, not a paid promotion. I just really like the Extreme Power US drills. Now, if you're out shopping for these yourself, they do have a few different models with different performances, different specs on them. The one that I like the best, the one that seems to work the best for our application is the model 61102. And again, this has the 1400 watt motor. It has that 17 millimeter hex chuck. They do come with a couple bits. They have the uh, flathead chisel here and they have this pointy one. But if you need anything other than that, like a scaling bit, you'll have to go out and find it yourself. 
Now these have a 14 joule impact energy and a 3800 beats per minute um, reciprocating speed. So those are all kind of important to know if you're doing a mining application, if you're doing really heavy demolition work. Those are some of the specs to look for. Anything less than that, anything with a, a smaller impact energy, anything with a slower BPM is going to be much less efficient at smashing out material, at breaking concrete, at breaking rock, or whatever you're doing with them. I hope this has been a helpful review for folks. If you're interested in more information about our Sandland Tunneling Project, check out some of my other videos for various installments of the Sandbar, other Sandland things, our monorail, and whatever else we're doing out there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.